Pokey class. In the last part, we'll talk about our ischemic changes again. We'll get more into this in our cardiovascular disease lecture, but uh, just wanted to cover it here. Uh, so again, remembering that um, when we have infarction, we have you know ischemia uh, to the heart, either or, there's going to be some disruptions to the membrane uh, potentials, right? So we're going to have some irregularities occurring. Um, and we'll talk more about this, the zone of necrosis and infarction. Typically, when we start seeing changes into the myocardium, it's going to start with the uh, sub-endocardium first, moving its way to the sub-epicardium. So infarctions usually happen from the inside out, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, quite often when we see ischemic changes or infarction, we're going to see changes to the ST segment. We're going to look at that first. The early minutes, we'll often see ST depression. While there's just still just ischemia, um, we might see T-wave inversion. When we start getting into infarction, cell death, we'll start seeing ST elevation, um, as well as we'll probably still see some T-wave inversion there. And again, this is because of the disruption um, to the membrane potentials because of inadequate blood flow due to the blockage somewhere in the coronary artery. Now, um, again, this is an example of kind of what we're seeing, right? So again, the most common causes of a T-wave inversion is myocardial ischemia or infarction. There can be other causes too. Um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a pulmonary embolism could lead to it as well. But quite often we're thinking myocardial ischemia or myocardial infarction. Where we've got um, here in this example, these T inverted T waves, right? Um, so again, normally your, again, your QRS complex should be in the same direction, right? Um, as your T wave here, they're not, right? We don't see that. Uh, if we look as well in V3, same thing. They're inverted, they're inverted. AVL, they're inverted. Um, that's an admiral. Even in an AVR, remember AVR, the, everything is going to be flipped, P and QRS, but now your T waves, you know, on the positive side of that deflection. That's not normal, right? So that's an example of, a T, of an inverted T wave, right? It's the sign of myocardial ischemia. Uh, now, key thing to bear in mind, remember we talked about earlier on, there are, you know, we have redundancies in terms of areas on the 12 lead ECG especially um, that look at, the, look at the same exact regions. So again, we know, a, we know that a limb lead one, V5, V6, right, are going to look at the lateral wall. We know that limb lead two, three, and AVF, right, look at the inferior wall. And we know that V1, V2, look at the septum. And we know that V3, V4, look at the anterior wall, right? So if we see changes, for example, just looking here at V1, right, for this to be significant, we need to see it at least in a buddy lead, right, or one, one area looking at the same region. So if you see changes in V1, which is a lateral lead that is supplied, you know, a lateral lead looking at a lateral wall of the vent left ventricle, which is supplied by the left circumflex, we should expect to see changes in other leads that are looking at the same area. And again, so limb lead one is a lateral lead. Well, we should see similar changes in, oh, AVL, right? AVL, sorry, put that up there, AVL. And then V6 and V5, we see inverted T waves, right? Um, you know, we also see these changes too in, you know, V4. We also see them in V3 and V2, um, which makes me think too, possibly the LAD is involved here as well, because that's looking at the anterior and the um, anterior wall. Um, we even see some changes in V2 and V1, so we could even get a little bit of the septum. It's actually a pretty massive uh, blockage potentially. Um, so again, 
Body leads are leads looking at the same regions of the of the ventricular wall, specifically the left ventricular wall, um, and we you know and they are fed by the same arteries. So we can get very very useful in determining you know what 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 vessel may be blocked because we would see changes in these same regions. And we can also use leads that look at the same regions as well as adjacent leads, which we would use for our um, you know, for, for example, V2 and V3, for example, you know, aren't exactly looking at the same exact lead, the same exact area, right? One's looking more at the septum, one's more anterior. Well, they're right next to each other. So those, those findings are, are significant. And they're also fed by the same exact artery, the LAD. Um, so just to bear that in mind too. Um, you can even, even group potentially V, you know, V4, V5, um, you know, even though they're, they're fed differently, could be a large infarction spilling out, you know, potentially into some of the, the lateral wall potentially too. Um, ST depression, um, again, we typically see this in earlier stages of ischemia. Um, you can see it in patients with a full infarction and, and, and you know, death. Um, there's a whole variant we'll get into in cardiovascular disease of, of end STEMI, so patients who have a heart attack but don't have ST elevation, they just have depression. And we classify um, ST depression by, remember that J point we talked about, how the when we you know, have a QRS complex, the line, this point should get back to the isoelectric line. Well, this is an example where it does not get back to it, right? So we see that present here in V4. We see that in V5. Um, let's see if we see this. Eh, not so much in V6. We do see a little bit of depression here, and we see it as well in V3. So we're thinking at least an anterior of some kind, maybe a little bit of anterior lateral ischemia um, or, or infarction in this patient. And this is classified as anything above a 0.5 millimeter um, uh, J point depression and more than two contiguous leads. And contiguous leads are those, again, those buddy leads, uh, or two or more of those contiguous leads. That would be, again, you know, areas looking at the same part, region of the heart, or leads looking at the same region of the heart, the anterior leads, the lateral leads. This example, we're seeing them in V5 and V6, which are both lateral leads. We're seeing it in V3 and V4, which are, both, you know, uh, are very pronounced in V4 and V3, which are both anterior leads. Um, and again, either way, even though V3 and V4, um, you know, or sorry, even though v, V4 and V5 are looking at different areas, one's more lateral, one is more anterior wall, they are right next to each other, right? So that would technically be contiguously as well. But generally, when we're referring to contiguous, we're referring to, you know, the, the same walls of the same wall of the heart that we're looking at. Um, so V3, V4, anterior, and probably a little bit of lateral too, because we're seeing it, you know, in V5, and these are going to right in, in order of each other. And again, more than, greater than, more, greater than or equal to um, 0.5 millimeter depression, again, looking at that J point. Now, there are variants of ST depression. Um, again, this is an example of a normal ST segment. It comes back to the isoelectric line. Um, there can be upsloping, so we have depression, but the morphology slopes up back into the, um, the T wave. There's horizontal, which is completely flat, and then there is downsloping um, ST depression. Uh, upsloping actually may not be necessarily due to uh, ischemia. You can actually see this in exercise. That's a normal, normal change. We think that has something to do with the, the shortening of the ST segment that potentially happens during exercise. And, um, it also may just be, you know, artifact, right? Sometimes if you're moving around a lot, that throws off the leads. So, uh, unless someone has other symptoms or other signs like upsloping ST depression by itself, isn't necessarily enough to classify someone as having infarction or ischemia, um, your horizontal or downsloping variants like that, that is, that's more, more or less uh, likely due to ischemia. Or, or infarction. And then there is ST elevation. So ST elevation, um, most common cause is, um, is a myocardial infarction. You can see it potentially in ischemia when people have ST elevation, they're actually not having a heart attack, but more often it's a full-blown full infarction. 
Um, people often refer to this as tombstones. Uh, this is a J point elevation greater than two millimeters in V2 or V3 or over uh, one millimeter in all other leads where we see the ST segment, again, that J point, right, is above that isoelectric line. This is pretty significant actually here in, in this one. Um, and again, we're looking for contiguous leads. So in this example, we see it in V3, we see it in V4, we see it in V2. Again, these are both, you know, these, these are in the same region looking at the anterior wall. Uh, V2 is looking more at the septum, but that's also fed by the LED and it's also right next to V3 in order. So this would be a significant finding for um, ST elevation, um, potentially involving the, um, the um, uh, involving the LAD. So again, greater than one millimeter of ST elevation, J point above the isoelectric line. And this is like at least five millimeters. This is pretty significant. Um, and then you can see a pathological Q wave. The Q wave is significant if it's greater than one box wide um, than any, than in other leads other than lead three um, in the AVR or greater than a third of the amplitude of the QRS complex. So if you see these really, really pronounced uh, you know, Q waves here. That would be a, a sign of an old, old, old uh, MI. So, um, so that that would be a Q wave. And again, this is a lead here, just looking at corresponding, um, uh, uh, corresponding walls and artery. We talked about this earlier that these things are in buddy leads. And again, for you know, for changes to be valid, we would expect them to be seen in leads that are looking at the same regions of a wall same regions that are perfused um, or neighboring regions, remembering the order of the, the unipolar leads um, in, in, in uh, reference to that. Now, ST changes, there are multiple different causes. Um, you know, it can be other, other, other things that cause it besides just um, ischemic changes. Here's a list of them um, for non-ischemic causes. Probably the one that's most prevalent um, you might see is pericarditis. You can see ST elevation in these patients because of some of the irritability that's happening, um, you know, to the heart, to the pericardium, where you'll see um, diffuse ST elevation, again, above one millimeter above the isolate or J point elevation greater than one millimeter above the isoelectric line. But again, you got it in pretty much every, you have it in every single segment. That's not a, a typical presentation of someone with chest of someone with chest pain due to an MI or myocardial ischemia um, or, or full infarction. Um, again, like that's you know, you, you know, you want to see it in contiguous leads, but the likelihood of that being every single lead, meaning every single vessel is probably blocked, pretty unlikely. And again, you'll learn more about other signs that make you think pericarditis instead of something else. So um, you may often see low amplitudes in the T waves. And again, that's just usually because maybe there's some compression potentially um, or atrial um, uh, injury or ventricular injury because of the inflammation in the pericard pericarditum. So that's uh, pericarditis. And then uh, there can also be other ca causes of uh, T wave changes. So we talked about the hyperacute T waves. You can see in hyperkalemia, we think that has due changes in the um, extracellular space and, and potassium. Um, that occurs when you have an elevated amount of potassium um, or hyperkalemia. And then uh, left bundle branch blocks. We're not going to talk about too much about those. Again, like we mentioned, the bundle bundle branches, um, right, they split the signal between different, you know, the tip, right and left side. Um, without getting too specific into trying to pick one out, anytime you see the splitting of, you know, the, the of the, uh, R, R wave or QRS complex, these kind of spikes here. So V6, we're, you know, we're looking at a pronounced, a pretty prominent R wave. That would reflect there's some sort of blockage. Again, remembering the ECG is an overlay of signals that are happening, you know, simultaneously throughout the heart. Typically, you know, while there is a splitting of the signal to right and left sides of the heart, there is like, it happens in a coordinated fashion, maybe, you know, an imperceivable difference in time. If there's a blockage to one of those bundle branches, one side is going to depolarize slower than the other. Um, it probably takes a little bit more of a trained eye to figure out if it's a right versus left bundle branch block. Either way, it's not an ideal situation to be in because it can lead to potentially 
um, you know, a you know a deadly arrhythmia, like a V-fib or something like that. So in a left bundle branch block, the change into polarization causes these very large R waves and the lateral leads, V1 and V6, because of the splitting of the overlay of the depolarization event occurring in the left versus right. So you end up seeing these pronounced waves, these two, two peaks, meaning that, again, that the polarizations are, aren't happening synchronously. They're happening divergently from each other. Um, and you have a very deep S waves that look like a, a, a W in the precordial leads in V2. So you're know, having this almost double W variant. You have an M variant in V6. Um, and again, it's because the ventricles are activated sequentially, right then left, rather than at the same time simultaneously. So you have these, you know, these, these variants, right? You know, these, these two twin peaks. And the same sort of thing you, you see in a right, in a left versus a right. Again, you see these twin peaks, um, you know, these splitting. And, uh, and again, that's due to do a blockage somewhere in the, in the bundle branches. And right bundle branch, QRS is, again, usually a little prolonged. You have a delayed right ventricular activation produces a secondary R wave or an R prime wave in the precordial leads, V1 through V3. So you have a, um, you know, this variant here call an M presentation. And then in V6, the lateral leads, you end up having this slurred wave in the lateral lead, uh, lateral lead. So you have this very kind of, you know, um, odd looking um, morphology. And you often see this little twin peak here too on the bottom in the, in the S wave, but a slurred S wave, right? A twin peak. So anytime you see twin peaks in the QRS complex, think on the branch block, because we have a discordance of that normal simultaneous di uh, discharge that we would see on the ECG um, because the, you know, the bundle branches should normally, they should depolarize at the same time. So that is our ventricular, or sorry, uh, ischemic changes. Um, and that is ECG in a nutshell. Thanks for listening.